We go to Borno State, where the government has imposed a total lockdown, shutting its borders to non-essential movement in a bid to contain influx of COVID-19. The state deputy governor, Omar Gaddafo, announced this in a statement on Sunday in May degree. Gaddafo said that the order would be, will take effect from Monday, April 13, by 6 a.m., adding that movement in and out of the state will be completely restricted. According to him, the state government adopted a proactive measure to protect its citizens in a bid to curb the spread of the pandemic in the state. Now, joining us via Skype is political analyst Bolaho Olujede. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon yeah, to you. Up. All right. We, we are preoccupied with the immediate fears of spreading the virus, and yet the lockdown and resultant effects suggest that we should be more concerned about the economic fallout. Is this correct? Um, it is not exactly correct. What we have is a very delicate balance. And I, and I will use the American statistics as an example for us. The first case in America was January 20. Six weeks after, which was about March 3rd, they had only 64 confirmed cases. Yesterday, they have 557 by yesterday, 567,000 cases over 21,000 deaths. So we have to be very careful about how we proceed about opening up the, 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 the markets. We have to be very, very careful. And that is especially against the background of the fact that we don't even have the healthcare framework. We don't have a system that can accommodate um, the kind of ferociousness with which it attacked places like America, like Italy, like Spain, even France, and to a certain extent, the United Kingdom as well. So we have to, it's a very delicate balance. Right about now, we are being told we have about 320 something cases in Lagos. I'm aware of two people who were not able to get a result out until about seven days. So when you have that kind of a serious testing capacity issue, we have to tread very, very carefully about opening up. So in my opinion, what we should be looking at is maybe um, let's make our palliative a bit more effective and look out extending the lockdown a little bit more, maybe a week or a couple of weeks more. Otherwise, uh, there, there, is, there is danger ahead. One other thing also is that we are not conducting Nigerian studies what is going on amongst the populace? We don't know. Everything seems to be a cutover from what is going on around the world. What about what is going on in Lagos? As far as COVID is concerned, we need to begin to look inwards at what exactly is going on. Are people catching these viruses? Are people staying at home after showing symptoms? And uh, are there increased cases in the hospitals of respiratory uh, 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 problems? If there, are, if there are no increased cases in those hospitals, so what is going on? Where are the, where are the patients? We must, we must ask a few questions. But, well, and just sitting down, yes. Um, I was just going to interject and ask you, it just all seems to be gloom and doom. Have you heard any encouraging news about um, our preparedness for a possible post-COVID recession? Very, very important one. There, there are a few things that are going on. You have the 500 billion naira. Uh, uh, fund which the government is making available. Uh, the fund will be for four main things. Number one, uh, it will be to support the state because definitely this problem is going to affect the state. Uh, number two, we're going to be able to channel some of it into uh, some special infrastructure projects which are meant to generate employment. By the target of the federal government of Nigeria, um, these projects are going to cut across to every local government and be able to employ at least a thousand people in those local in each of those local government. Um, it's also going to be used to expand our healthcare sector capacity. So healthcare infrastructure development and as well as uh, any other intervention that the federal government may approve along the line. So that is what the 500 billion uh, Naira uh, uh, fund is supposed to be for. Uh, there are a few other things being done for uh, small and, and medium-sized companies. 
we already have the, the act anyway, the, the Finance Act, which exempts the small companies from taxes, uh, reduce the taxes for the medium-scale companies. But we now have to think about the big companies as well. Okay, help us appreciate the purpose of the stimulus policy. Um, you see, in, in, a, in a recession, the, the world might actually be in a recession already. What is important is that we must make income disposable, we will make income available for people to spend. That is why they say you spend your way out of the recession. So everything that has to do with making income available for people to spend must be done. So um, the, the, when, when we do something for the medium and small scale uh, uh, companies, which are big employers of labor anyway, we'll be able to make money available for people to spend. If we say uh, some people should not pay taxes, that means they will have more disposable income to be able to spend. That's another thing. Um, along the line, I believe we'll get to that point where we also give money. Oh, no. Okay. Hello? Yes, we're with you. Okay. Yes, we, I, I believe we'll also get to that point where we give money to the big employers as well because people need to be able to keep their jobs. And employers are important in ensuring that they keep their jobs and also able to spend. Apart from that, government itself must continue to spend, which is why the issue of... Uh, uh, those special infrastructure projects becomes very important. When governments spend, people get employed, people get money, and they are able to spend. Everything is around spending. Uh, there are a few fundamental ones that have happened already. Um, issues about, I mean, this is general economic matters now anyway. It seems as if um, we have done a bit of devaluation. That's very important as well. It also appears as if we have removed the fuel subsidy, or, or rather, let me use the, a better word, fully deregulated the PMS market. That is also very important. Now, if the economy comes back on full stream, and people are not buying fuel at 145 any longer, and they are buying, because right now, it's even almost useless that there's a reduction in, in fuel price. But by the time the activity comes back into full glare, it will mean that people will spend less on fuel, and it might further go down. If people spend fuel on, uh, less on fuel, it means they have more disposable income to spend. These are all part of the spending pattern that we need to uh, stimulate and ensure that we spend our way out of the recession. All right, Bulaho, thank you very much for joining us on the news. You're welcome.